Come on in. Hallelujah. Come on in, everybody. Come on in the room. Come on in, everybody. It's our regular Saturday night devotion. Yep. There you go. Travis, I love you, man. I just sent you a text. Um, if you know how to share me, share me. This is going to be good tonight. This thing right here, bless me today. Come on. If you know how to share me, share me. We do this every Saturday night. Much love. I see you, JG100. Much love to the people that I met on yesterday in Los Angeles, California. That's a part of the Church of Scope in Christ. Come on. If you know how to share me, go ahead and share me. Come on. This is going to be good tonight. It's not going to be long, but it's going to be good. God, though, this thing bless me. Jesus Christ. I'm excited about this devotion. What's happening, everybody? Come on. Let's do about... Um, 30 seconds of shout out where you're from, Max, and I see you. If you go to New Life, just tell me what service you go to. Philip, I see you. West Side, Florida. Come on. Swipe to the right to share. New York, Boston, Orlando, Round Lake. There you go. There you go. Uh, Atlanta, Ohio, Hazelcrest. Come on here. Mississippi. In my cricket litter, cricket litter. <laughs> 930 service. Alabama. What's happening? Tinley Park, west side of Chicago. Come on, guys. If you know how to share me, go ahead and share me. All right? All right. Channel 7. WLS Channel 7. I think I'm coming. I'm trying to come. I'll be on. I'm coming to 7 this week. All right? So, guys, I want you to listen to this. So, in this month, we're doing this series. Uh, California was amazing. God met us in California. Jesus Christ. Um, there you go. Um, so all month I'm doing this series on follow the cloud and I'm studying like the children of Israel, um, coming out of Egypt and being delivered. And I show them in Exodus, the 13th chapter, I show you how God shows up in a cloud. And the Bible says he got in front of them to lead them that God wrapped himself. Jumpstart was awesome. Um, got in front of them and manifested himself in the form of a cloud, listen carefully, to lead them out of Egypt. They had been in Egypt for 430 years that the enemy had a grip on them. And the Bible says that God raised up Moses, Moses, the mighty man of God, who didn't appear to be, a, who shouldn't have been a mighty man of God. He was a murderer and a fugitive. Um, uh, nevertheless, God used him to set the children of Israel free after 430 years. Now, I want you to think about that because some of you all, the enemy had you bound for years. The enemy had you bound for years, bound in your mind, bound in your emotions, bound in any form of addiction, bound in a relationship, bound uh, with um, sexual immorality, just bound. The enemy had you for years and it took God to get you out of it. It took God to get you out of it. And one of the things that's so amazing to me is that when God um, tells Moses, listen, I am going to harden Pharaoh's heart so that my miraculous signs and wonders can be shown. So I'm going to make, I'm going to make his heart hard just so that you all can see miracle signs and wonders. All right. So God finally, finally, um, gets the children of Israel out of Egypt. You should read it to the point that the Egyptians were putting them out. He not only put them out, he gave them their plunder. They, they gave them their plunder to leave. So he, God made the enemy stack the children of Israel as they exited. All right. And I speak that over some of you all that your bonuses will be larger than what you expected as you exit. Hallelujah. Some of y'all should just type the word bonus, bonus, bonus. As you leave, I decree and declare that they will stack you, that you'll get the plunder on your way out. All right. So then when they leave, the Bible says that God took them the long round. He could have taken them through the land, listen carefully, of the Philistines, though it was shorter. But he knew that if he took them through the land of the Philistines, that the Philistines would see them as bait and would pounce on them. So he avoided them being whooped and took them the long round. I said to you all before on a, on a previous Periscope, God is taking you the long route to protect you. All right. 
So then we know that God manifests himself in a cloud. Then we know, as you, if you read Exodus, that finally Pharaoh changes his mind. Please listen to this. Pharaoh basically said, I done messed around and let my servants go. Who else going to serve me? Who else going? Who else? Who else am I going to have control over? And I need you to think about that line right there, because there are some people that God delivered you from them, and the only reason that they want you back is because you're the only one that will pull up, put up with their foolishness. They controlled you. They manipulated you. They had, they had their hand on you. So they really want you back because they don't have anybody that's going to take the mess that you took from them. And that's why it took God to get you out. Hallelujah. Come on here, somebody. It took God to get you out. Those of you that can relate to what I'm talking about, I need you to type on the screen, God got me out. Come on here. God got me out. Come on here. Type that on the screen. God got me out. He delivered me out of the hand of my enemy. All right. Now listen to this. So Pharaoh makes up his mind that he's going to go after them. He changes his mind. I don't know why I feel this, but I'm just going to flow. All right. Like some of you all, they have begun to call you again. They trying to reach back out to you. They are coming back after you. Why? Because they want you back. Not that they're going to love you. Not that they're going to marry you. They only want you because you're the only one that's going to put up with their mess. You were their slave and they were your master. All right. So when, um, the enemy decides that he's going to come after them. God changes his position. The Bible says that the cloud shifted. Hallelujah. And came from in front of them and came between them and the enemy. Please listen to me. And that's where God is between you and the thing that had you. He has come between you and them, between you and it. Now, so I was getting on the plane when I looked, when I read about and studied this shifting that God no longer is leading them. He's gone from being a guide to a guard. He's gone from guiding them to guarding them. Please listen to this. He's gone from guiding them. In other words, I'm not going to lead you right now. I need to shield you. I need to protect you because what had you is on your heels. Oh, my God. What had you is on your heels. It is coming after your heart. It's coming after your emotions. It's coming after your body because it knows that you're the only one that's going to put up with their foolishness. So God shifts and goes from guiding to to what? Guarding. And when he gets between them, now I want you to listen to what the Lord spoke to me as I was getting on the plane. I'm getting on the plane and I am walking to my seat and the Lord says to me loud in my spirit, I want you to listen to this. This is what he says. You will never know the full details of your deliverance. You will never know the full details of your deliverance. There's some small pieces that I worked that you will never know about, but I did it to deliver you. Now, I'm going to show you something right now. All right. In Exodus, um, the 14th chapter. In the 20th verse, I want you to listen to this. The Bible says, coming between the armies of Egypt and Israel, throughout the night, the cloud brought darkness to the one side and light to the other side. So neither went near the other all night long. So he puts a cloud between them. You ready? On this side. Where the children of Israel are is light. But on this side, the same cloud is dark. That is a detail. Now watch me. The children of Israel, all they see is light. They have no idea that God got the enemy in darkness. In other words, listen to me. What had you won't even be able to see you. 
because God has put, has come between them. You got light to get out, but they are in darkness. One cloud is providing light on the front and darkness in the back. Hallelujah. And I need some of y'all to understand they can't see you. God won't even allow them to see that you leave in them. God won't even allow them to see that they, that they don't affect you the way that they used to affect you. You have no idea of the full details of what God did to bring you out. Hallelujah. Come on here. Some of y'all should hit the heart on that. Somebody running. I know that's right. He said he put a cloud and in the front of it. In other words, I'm going to show you how to get out of it. But I'm going to leave them in darkness and make them think that they still got you. Shut up. <laughs> I'm going to leave a light for you because I'm going to provide for you a way of escape. But I'm going to leave them in darkness that they won't even see you, that you ain't even theirs no more. What? It gets better. In the same chapter, Exodus 15, get this, 14 rather, in 24. Listen at this one, verse 24. During the night watch, I'm sorry, during the night watch of the night, the Lord, listen carefully, looked down from the pillar of fire and cloud at the Egyptian army. Please listen to this. Listen to this. And threw it into confusion. So what God did was, he basically threw the, the Egyptian army in total confusion. My God, something that has had you so long knows you. They know how you think. They know how you move. They know how you act. Why? Because they have been with you for years. But when God throw them into confusion, please listen, they won't be able to figure you out. You better hear me. They won't be able to figure you out. And there's some people that think they know you, but God has thrown them into confusion that they will not be able to figure you out. They used to control your emotions. They can't understand why you ain't, why you not crying no more, why you not moved anymore, because God has thrown them into confusion. They will never be able to figure you out. Hallelujah. <laughs> Is that thing blessing you? Hallelujah. So what? guess what? You can't see me and you can't figure me out because God has thrown them into confusion. You better hear me right now. And some of you all, thank you, Jesus. Some of you all trying to figure out rather than you crying over the fact that they're not calling you no more. You better thank God that he has thrown them into confusion because they had you. They know how you think. They know what you like. They know what you don't like. They know your schedule. They know where you are. They know what time you're there. But right now they have been thrown into confusion that they cannot figure you out. All right. So number one, they can't see you. Number two, they, you can't figure you out. And here it is. Verse 25. Now this one. I want you to hear me. This one messed me up. You ready? The Bible says in verse 25, listen at this. He jammed the wheels of the chariot. What? He, to my God, jammed the wheels of their chariots so they had difficulty driving. I've been reading this Bible for over 30 some years and never paid attention to that small detail that God jammed the wheels of the chariot that they could not. They had difficulty driving. Do you hear me? What are you saying to me, Pastor Anna? They can't get to you because God has jammed the wheels of the chariot. Do you hear me talk? They cannot catch up to you. Why? Because God has jammed the wheels of the chariot. So what do you do? You better hear me now. Keep it moving. Why? Because they can't see you. They can't figure you out. And they can't get to you. Things that they used to do that would make you mad. 
They can't get to you because their chariots have been jammed. How they used to touch you and kiss you and caress you and make you feel like they had to have you. Now when they touch you, it don't move you. Why? Because they wheels have been jammed. I'm talking to somebody today. You will never know the details of what God went through to get you out. You will never know the details. And some of y'all right now, you need to hear me. That thing was supposed to take you out. That thing was supposed to destroy you. But God got in front of you and led you out. And when that thing came after you, God shifted and got between you and it. And now that he's between it, they can't see you. They can't figure you out. And they can't get to you. Why? Because God got something better for you. I feel like talking today. Do you hear what I'm saying to you? God got something. He has a promised land. A land flowing with milk and honey. He got, you listen, you're going to reap what you didn't even sow. Hallelujah. That thing, you... Listen to me, everybody that's been delivered from anything or been delivered from anyone, I need you just to let this come out of your mouth. Repeat after me. I will never know the full details of what God did to bring me out, but I'm thankful. Oh, yeah, we got this one. I'm going to find you. We don't... All right. So I want you to praise the Lord for your liberty. I'm going to get you. We got a devil on here. We have a devil, but we'll get the devil. We have a block ministry. All right. You'll never know the full details of what God did to bring you out. All right, guys, it's new life. Please, tomorrow, don't forget that we are at where? Where are we? We are at the pavilion right there on the corner of Harrison and Roosevelt. Don't forget that we have Tasha Cobbs in the building for our children's ministry. They're going to be at Whitney Young. I got Ninja Turtles. I got everything. They have a full, 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 full uh, prep rally that's going to be amazing. Guys, I pray that you received this devotion tonight. This thing blessed me. I need you to po repost it. Put it on your Facebook page. Put this thing out there. Because listen to me, you'll never know the full details of what God did to bring you out. All right? I love you. See you tomorrow. And don't forget, we'll be periscoping the 730 service. Hallelujah. Love you guys. To the devil that cussed. On my scope. I'm coming back through here. I'm a block you. You'll never come through here again.